Hello, I'm Tom Keneally. I love cities for their pace, variety and stimulation, but it's not enough. I need tranquility, and this is one place I can find it. This superb building has a value which links it to places of a very different kind. What links all Australia's most precious places is the register of the national estate. It's a list of places we'd like to see preserved for our own sake and that of future generations. And it consists of historic buildings like this, Aboriginal sites and culture, and of course, natural areas. Wilderness is an essential part of the national estate. Wilderness is any area which is largely untouched by modern society and which permits the survival of its plants and animals. Now, there are some astounding natural areas on the national estate, and I've been fortunate enough to visit a number of them. I'd like to share with you what I've gained from that. Of course, the thing is, where to start? I first went to Kakadu eight years ago to research my book, Outback. What excited me about the place was its astounding diversity. The wide beauty of the place, quite exhilarating to the soul. And the escarpment itself, to walk there, one is aware, as one is in so many wilderness areas of Australia, of the antiquity of the place. Above all, what impressed me were the great uh, art sites that are there. And it bears away forever this idea that Australia was a vacancy until we arrived and gave it meaning. There was always a map of Australia. There were always the song lines, the dreaming map, the real map of Australia before the Europeans came. Of course, every part of Australia, including those areas which we describe as wilderness, has been occupied, managed and treasured by Aboriginal people for tens of thousands of years. Aboriginal people retain a strong, continuing relationship to land within wilderness areas. This relationship is legally recognised in some areas and includes arrangements for Aboriginal people to have a crucial, ongoing role in managing the land. Well, Southwest Tasmania must be one of the most primal places I've ever seen. Two years ago, I spent 10 days here hiking the Southwest Track. The Southwest is one of the world's last great temperate wilderness areas. Rugged and remote, this region has a unique grandeur. Magnificent glaciated landforms and extraordinary vegetation. There are precipitous rocky ridges and peaks, densely forested valleys and sodden plains of button grass cut by ice cold streams. Southwest Tasmania is a, a wonderful hike. A hard slog, but one that you'll remember all your life. When you're there, you're aware that the Southwest has been protected in part by the remoteness, the harsh climate and the inaccessibility of the region. But there are plenty of other uh, regions that don't have that sort of protection. 
and for which there are development proposals right now which potentially threaten them. And one such area is the Tarkine region of northwest Tasmania, which has the largest single tract of rainforest in Australia and contains all the Tasmanian forest types. On the other side of the continent, there's a wilderness area the size of Tasmania itself. The Kimberley region of northwest Australia has the most extensive coastline wilderness left in Australia. There are thousands of uncharted bays and inlets and islands, and the surface of the land itself is amongst the most ancient on Earth. 350 million years ago, the Kimberley's massive rock walls and ranges were part of a great barrier reef system. Now they're home to a profuse variety of wildlife, as well as to the famous Wanjana paintings. The Aboriginal people believe that these were made by the creator spirits themselves, who then entered the earth at the places where their images are recorded on the rock. One place I haven't yet visited are the tidal waterfalls of the remote Kimberley coast. Here, gigantic tides, which fluctuate up to 10 metres a day, rush through narrow gorges at such incredible speeds they look like horizontal waterfalls. The Kimberley area is so vast and rugged that its wilderness areas have only recently been nominated for the National Estate Register. They're now undergoing the process of assessment which is required before listing. I really love the mountains. The Kosciuszko area is the one I can get to visit most often for cross-country skiing and for walking. In Kosciuszko, as in all wilderness areas of the National Estate, there is the pressure of ever-increasing tourism. But to find the soul of the place, you can't look in the ski resorts. What I love most about the Australian Alps are the primeval stones that are there, left there by glaciers. And then, most of all, the snow gum. This gives the Australian Alps a feeling that no other Alps in the world have. It typifies, like a lot of places in Australia, something that I and a lot of other Australian writers want to write about, and that is that it's nothing like Europe. It's nothing like anywhere else. A mere 700 kilometres to the west are the distinctive Mallee woodlands of the Sunset Country. Here are Victoria's largest wilderness areas and some of the best remaining examples of semi-arid vegetation. When I went there, my first impressions were that it was unspectacular. It takes some time to appreciate that here is a landscape of subtle beauty. There are Mallee woodlands stretching like a grey-green sea, heathlands which become carpets of wildflowers in the spring, extensive areas of dune country, remnants of pine baloke woodlands and salt lakes. All of these areas shelter a wide range of dry country birds and animals. Although Europeans have traditionally regarded Mallee country as wasteland and desert, local Aborigines use the word Tatyara, which means good country.
One national estate area that's been the subject of a long protection battle is the Daintree Rainforest of Northern Queensland. Thanks to its inclusion on the World Heritage List, its position is now much more secure. Its greatest threat now is the pressure of people like you and me, tourists. While we're there, we'll need to tread carefully. The Daintree region is uh, quite remarkable. It's got those wonderful mountains and the rainforest, nearly up against the fringing reef. And of course, the reef itself is a miraculous thing. Australia has the most ancient animals and birds, and it seems a lot of them are up there in the Dane Tree. And the Dane Tree forest itself matches them by feeling like the most ancient forest on Earth, so that you feel as if you're the first human being entering the first rainforest at the very formation of the Earth. Australia's a land of such extraordinary contrasts. The other wilderness area I love is a, a long, long way away from the richness of the tropical rainforest. I first spent a lot of time in Central Australia when I was researching a book. To have a book to write is a good excuse to stay a long time anywhere. And out beyond is a quite magical country. To walk there is to walk amongst ancient gods indeed. It's very rich and very complicated. This is, according to the teachers of my childhood, the dead heart. It's the live pulsing heart to me. One of the areas of Central Australia which most impressed me was the region known as the Simpson Desert, part of which is listed on the register of the National Estate. And what most impresses me about it are those remarkable lines of sand dunes that run forever. I've always felt that deserts like this are uh, great purifies, the air's so crisp, and human life in particular is reduced to scale. Vast skies and vast areas do that for us. They inspire us and they refresh us. And of course, the rainforest being the lungs of the earth, the deserts and the wildernesses being an extraordinary storehouse of animal and plant genetic material in terms of the survival of our species and all the other species on a breathable planet, the wilderness is essential. The listing of these areas on the register of the national estate is an indication of their outstanding value. But listing alone won't guarantee their protection. It's up to all of us to make sure they survive for their own sake, as well as for ours. Well, talking about all this so long makes me wish I was out there now. So see you later.